So I found Matt here last time and he was thinking he was talking to you, but you were still in New York. I don't know what's going on with him. I'm not moving. Matthew, here, Matthew. What are you doing, man? Alright buddy, what are you doing? Be right here. How did you get that? What do you mean? You were you were just doing the I just got off of a plane. Well, you were sitting right here in Yeah, I just you? picked I, up Andrew. I bet he was right here. I've been I've been, over there. I've been doing the plan chat with Andrew the whole time. I've been in New York for a week. No. You've been here. Alright, well let's let's talk about something else. Is there a movie you want to watch or something? Yeah. Have you seen Poltergeist yet? We went over this before. What? Let's, let's watch Haxon. Haxon? Yeah. Okay. So the film really showed how stigmatized witchcraft was. Um, and how easy it was to just point a finger and say that that person was a witch. Conditions or disorders were taken as people that might have been bewitched. And then you can talk about the hysteria and how they the poking on the back was supposed to be you got bewitched or something, or you were a witch yeah, yourself. You can't feel it. We're here to talk to you tonight about the movie Hexum. It was made in 1922 and it's one of the earliest movies to still be in production today thanks to companies like Criterion. So to kind of give you a rundown about this movie, it starts with an older gentleman who's uh, not well in health. He ends up dying. Um, there's a housemaker that blames a, um, like a beggar woman that's staying with the family is being a witch because you know he died right around the time they brought her in um, so she gets brought in by a bunch of priests and they start to torture her she is now brought in to by the church into this like a uh, prison cell type thing they uh, torment the living hell out of her until the point where she breaks and falsely confesses to being a witch. So we're back to the priest now. The priest who was touched by the wife of the older gentleman who ended up fantasizing about her confessed his sins to his uh, fellow priest that he was fantasizing about her. Um, his punishment was he had to take a whipping. Um, the whipping's not fun, as you know, but towards the end he was starting to enjoy it. Following along, we're going to go back to the lady now, or the, the, the man that was um, dying at the beginning of the movie, um, that falsely confessed to the um, beggar woman being the witch in the house, who touched the priest, who the priest then started to fantasize about her, you know, that lady. Um, she was brought in by the priests and put in the same kind of torture type chamber. She was a lot stronger though, probably because she was younger. Um, she didn't break until the priest brought her daughter into the um, into the picture, and then she as well ended up falsely confessing to being a witch. So now we're back to the beggar lady at the very beginning of the movie, who like the whole chain reaction. Um, she, you know, falsely confessed, "Yes, I am a witch," but let me also tell you, every other lady in that household is a witch as well. Um, they were all brought in; they were all burned at the stake. That tells you something. Don't let a case of the plague fool you. This movie does have a lot of witchcraft in it. Um, my good buddy Andrew's here today to join us talking about the movie Hexon. Andrew? A Andrew couldn't make it tonight. What? He's not here. He was. Uh, uh, just 
cut to this clip. And it brings to the question, why did we pick this movie? Um, while not being necessarily based off of a true story on one event, at the time it does reflect upon how witchcraft was looked at in the world during kind of like the 1920s. The director of the film, Benjamin Christensen, picked up the book Malice Maleficorum, which is Hammer of the Witch, is what the translation is. The, uh, the book um, kind of elevated, you know, sorcery to the point where of heresy. The book even suggested um, torture was the best way to obtain information or um, to, you know, abstract that the uh, witch was a witch and the only way of um, curing the witch was death. A book, you know, was kind of used around the Renaissance time as um, justification for deaths and the brutality of um, witches and you know any sorcery whatsoever uh, all around that 16th and 17th century time period. I to implement Exodus 22:18 that you shall not permit a sorceress to live. In the text it, it pretty much states that women are more susceptible to being possessed by demonic possessions um, just through the manifold of their sex. Publication of the malice, um, it's estimated that three quarters of the uh, people prosecuted were women. Most people state it and I pretty much agree, you know, this text is way outdated. Um, it's pretty terrible. It's poorly written and <laughs> obviously women are not the devil. Gustavo kind of like that malice. Um, Christensen picked it you know, to kind of make a, a horror mockumentary of the, the malice. When Christensen's time of 1922, he really felt mental health was not getting the respect it deserved. Um, kind of much like today, mental health still continues to be a struggle for many of us. Overall, this film really kind of shed light on um, the way sorcery and witchcraft was um, way back in the day. Um, you would either be really old, you're a witch. You could be super young and pretty, you're a witch. You could have a streak of gray hair, you're a witch. Um, it really shed light on that. So, I mean, it was a good movie. Uh, I would suggest that if you do like reading, um, good movie to see. Um, there's no words in the movie. It's all sound and um, font, so good luck reading. <laughs> um, I think overall I would give it like an 8. I mean, it was good. Uh, Andrew, what did you think of the movie? I don't know where he went. All right, hey, if you want to check out more stuff of uh, Spirits of the Silver Screen, click the link right here. More stuff from us here at Cools Paranormal, click the link right here. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And switch that notification bell from personalized to all if you want to be notified on all of our videos. Hey, uh, Sam, are we going to go watch Poltergeist tomorrow? No. No.